Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my video, video number 241. I uh, can't say game because there are actually two games in that video. Uh, we'll take a look at the first one here. It was a, um, here, let's have a little sound. It was a Scandinavian defense. I was black here. And my opponent uh, takes as normal. And then he defends with c4, a bit of an unusual move, but not yet a mistake. Uh, the mistakes come later in this game. I play c6 to undermine, the normal way of playing. And now there's uh, different ways for white to proceed. I think uh, taking is a mistake in this case. It accepts the gambit, but it's a good gambit for black. I get a lot of control. So we'll see what happens in the game. Um, I think one of the more interesting ways to play is this move d4. And then uh, black takes the pawn. And this is actually a transposition. Um, this is a position from the Karo Khan defense, known as the of Botvinnik attack. So if uh, white had played e4 and black played c6, white plays d4, black plays d5, then uh, black takes e d c d and then uh, and white takes e d c d and then plays c4 and then black defends with knight <coughs> knight f6. Um, that's the uh, Panov Botvinnik attack against the Karakhan. So that's another way to get to this position and it's a good position for white uh, playable. Um, it looks like knight c3 is also a move, but uh, taking here, I think, is, is a mistake. This is a good gambit for, uh, for uh, black. He gets immediate pressure on these uh, dark squares here. Um, the pawn to d4 can never be played because the queen and the knight are on that square now, and then uh, e5 is a move that's coming very quickly, and it's just going to clamp down. Um, you can try knight c3 first, but I'm still going to play uh, e5. Uh, so d3 was played, and we're pretty much out of the opening book after this. d3, e5, oh, after this move, f3. And f3 is just a mistake. So my opponent uh, just had a fondness for these uh, pawn moves. You see it in both games. Um, <clears throat> but in particular in this one, this move f3, big mistake. So um, just opens up, uh, I mean, it controls these squares and keeps my knight out of them, but it also opens up this diagonal onto the king. And I'm going to play bishop c5 anyway. It's part of my plan just to clamp down on this square. And uh, normally I'm putting pressure on f2 here. But uh, anyway, he follows up with some more pawn moves. And actually, um, eventually I play queen b6. I could play it uh, even right now. But I went ahead and castled first. And after rook a2, this is kind of a peculiar move, but actually it, it does afford some defense along the seventh rank there, second rank, I guess. Um, so it's not entirely unreasonable, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> once again, I can play queen b6 here, but I, I played a, <clears throat> a slow move here, a5. Well, I'm just preventing b4, but it turns out b4 was not a threat because uh, queen b6 immediately threatens to take the knight, and, uh <clears throat> and so he doesn't really have time for b4. So a5 was really unnecessary, but he plays uh, b3 here, and finally I get the idea and play queen b6. So my opponent plays a really horrible move here, knight d2, blocking the uh, rooks. So the, the second rank is no longer defended. And, um, and also this uh, knight is, is, uh, can just be taken. It's hanging. It's got two attackers and only one defender. Um, so that's what I played. But actually there's an even better continuation taking advantage of the fact that the knight has blocked the uh, second rank defense of the rook. Um, so there's a mate in two here if you can spot it. Okay, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away here. It is uh, bishop here. King up is the only move. And then queen there is checkmate. So this knight, you see, not only did it block the rook, which was defending the second rank, it also blocks the knight, I mean the bishop, which was defending the uh, e3 square. So uh, a simple mate afforded by that uh, knight d2 move. So <laughs> this uh, knight d2 kills two pieces with one blow. <laughs> Okay, so after knight d2, uh, I didn't notice the mate, but I did notice his uh, uh, <clears throat> his uh, knight was hanging. And then when he played uh, bishop to b2, I had noticed already that uh, queen f2 was checkmate if he didn't do something to defend against it. So a short game. Uh, my opponent immediately asked for a rematch. So I, I said okay, and we played a second game. So I'm white here. I, I kick up with e4, and he plays the French defense. And uh, normal stuff up to this point here. Let's look at the opening book. 
takes. This is the Rubenstein variation. It's like the third choice here. It's still a reasonable way to play. Knight takes. And then the normal moves here would be, uh, you know, knight d7, bishop d7, bishop e7, knight f6. Um, these are all, all reasonable developing moves, and uh, they're all um, okay <clears throat> for black, as far as I know. Uh, but what my opponent plays is a very unusual move, f5, following the same pattern <laughs> that he had um, in the previous game of making excessive pawn moves. And it's also, in addition to not being a developing move, it's also opening up uh, this diagonal to the king, which could be dangerous. But in this case, um, there appears to be no way to take advantage of it. So a knight move is in order. I, I drop the knight back, and then he plays um, c6, which... Uh, Keeps my knight out of these squares, so kind of a similar pattern to the previous game. Uh, let's let's go back and look at the notation tab. I continue developing, and uh, you know I've got quite an edge here just because of my superior development. Um, bishop c4, and these pawns just make targets, so it's um, makes uh, development easy. When he played f4, it undermined the um, the e6 pawn, and so that that makes a nice target there, and so gives me a logical uh, idea around which I can organize the development of my pieces. So we both castle here, and I play bishop g5, and so now I've got all my pieces out and he's only got uh, two developed, and uh, well he brings out his queen, which is an interesting way to play. And I decide to force the issue with the bishop, and so he takes rather than retreating. And then I play the move, um, <coughs> no, I'm sorry, it's black's move, he plays the move knight to e4. So that, that's interesting. He's, he's attacking the uh, bishop and the pawn. Um, I should probably just play something like queen to d3, defending the pawn. My bishop, for some reason I thought during the game the bishop was hanging, but actually it's defended by the knight. So if I go queen d3, he plays knight takes bishop, I play knight takes knight. And uh, we have a situation where I have a queen and two pieces developed, and he only has a queen developed. So I have, I have quite a lead in development, and it's uh, similar to what happened in the game. I, I just drop my bishop back, defending the pawn. And now um, the chess engine, when I looked at it, it was recommending the move um, c5 here, just trying to undermine the center. After what black played, the exchange, uh, once again we're in a situation where I just have this lead in development. I've got two pieces out, plus the queen, and um, black has only developed the queen. Both sides have castled. So um, plays rook e8 here, rook f e1, normal moves, queen d6, Maybe another wasted move, probably better to uh, <clears throat> find something more constructive to do than, than shuffle the queen around. And I go knight h4, which is uh, immediately attacking the f1, which uh, because of the pin on the e pawn, there's pins in both directions, um, it's actually a hanging pawn here. So he defends with g6. So right here, uh, here's a good tactical quiz. What's, what's a good move for white in this position? Okay, uh, if you want to uh, some time to think about it, um, why don't you pause the video? It's, it's a good position worth, worth giving some time to. I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. What white can play here, which is a very interesting move, is knight takes, knight takes um, f5. And, um, of course, the e-pawn is pinned, but uh, he could take with the g-pawn. But then you have this very powerful check with the queen. And uh, where can the king go? If he goes to the corner, for example, you have another check, and then you've got a rook lift, and um, you just have a tremendous attack. Notice that uh, his pieces are over here, and not only that, they don't, don't really have a great way to get into the game. Uh, there's kind of a log jam on uh, d7 here where both the knight and the <coughs> bishop want to use the same square, and uh, the bishop is hemmed in by all these light squared pawns, so, uh, and uh, and white's pieces are all prepared to flood in, and he can even uh, start throwing pawns forward if the queen and the rooks aren't enough. So uh, anyway, this this is a very strong attack, and it's just winning for white. So that's that that would be the way, uh, you know, you're always looking, as uh, Chess Explained uh, talks, you're always looking for ways to punish your opponent when he plays uh, when he plays badly and makes all these pawn moves. You know there should be something there. You just got to uh, kind of search a little bit and find it. I didn't find that, and not only that, I played I played actually a really bad move here. I played rook e5, which is bad not only because uh, I had a better move, but it's also bad because it just invites a natural developing move from my opponent, and uh, which gains a tempo. So uh, at this point, uh, <clears throat> black more or less has solved all his problems, and there's no more uh, 
great tactics on uh, f5 there. So he continues the knight f6. He gets his knight over here. Uh, he uses that extra tempo to get his knight over here around his king, and, and he's actually pretty secure at this point. Play f3 to keep his knight from hopping into uh, g4 and uh, e4. And uh, he goes to d5, hitting my rook again, so I'll drop back. And then he plays queen f4. So this is, is a bit of a problem. I guess uh, one move I didn't consider, which I could have played, was uh, queen to e1, defending the knight. But this move is kind of a double attack. It seems to force some action. I didn't see anything better than taking. And, uh, you yeah, know, we've really got kind of an even position here. Maybe even black is slightly better. So, uh, so he's gotten away with his uh, somewhat risky opening play. I was a little bit worried at some point if my knight could be trapped over here. But because of the pin on the e-pawn, I can always take on f5. So, um, so I never actually get in a situation where my knight is trapped. But uh, still, my pieces are now somewhat disorganized. The knight doesn't have an easy way back in the game. The rook is no longer on an open file. The bishop is still a good piece, but uh, so uh, and but because my pieces are disorganized, I don't really have a way to take advantage of Black's lack of development, and he's going to have time to develop his pieces. So the position is about even. He starts out uh, moving his king forward. I kick the knight away and uh, give my knight a, a way back into the game through g2. Um, he plays knight d5, <clears throat> hitting my pawn. I defend it. Bishop d7. Knight g2, getting my knight back in the game. Yeah, so as I get my pieces organized, uh, Black also has a chance to develop his pieces and get, get his plan going. I'm not so worried about his plan of pushing these pawns forward because they all end up on um, light squares, which blocks in his bishop and uh, make targets for my bishop. So I think um, this is probably okay for White if he pushes these pawns forward. So I'm just ignoring it. He, he goes forward with the king, and now... I want to um, get this knight out of its strong central post. He takes, and I take back, <clears throat> and he can chase my bishop away and, and kind of reclaim that post. He throws in the a4 move. But I have another c-pawn. So I've succeeded in getting rid of my doubled c-pawn, and I've chased his knight away. And so now, actually, I'm, I'm slightly better once again. So I pass through that <coughs> uh, range where um, black was pretty much equal, and, and now I'm a little bit better. So after knight b6, I double up on the e-file, trying to get some pressure against the rook, although right now it's uh, adequately defended. It's got two defenders, so uh, um, I'm not really threatening anything on the e-file just yet. But he goes rook a, b8. I go knight f4, trying to get the knight in, get some more pressure on the e-pawn. And he goes rook b7. And now here's an opportunity, because he's, uh, this, this rook is now under-defended, so I can play d5 and uh, basically win a pawn here. He takes, I take. And now he can't take back because I'll win the rook. And he can't uh, leave it there because I'll just take it and win a pawn. So he pushes. But after knight d3, there's just uh, no way to save the pawn. <clears throat> he pushes again, and uh, then there's an exchange on e4. And we get to this position. So I finally have uh, converted my advantage into some material. But actually, um, this is uh, a position that black can hold uh, with, with careful play. The thing is, this pawn... Is uh, it's a strength. It's a passed pawn that might become a queen, um, but it's subject to attack, and all his pieces are in the neighborhood. He's, so he's got four pieces that can attack the pawn, and right now I've got I've got three pieces to defend it, and my king is far away. So actually, he can blockade and, and win that pawn, or at least to prevent it from advancing uh, with careful play. So the game continues, and and we're in this range of about even. Uh, probably he should take the knight off and just continue with his plan of going after the pawn. But um, So he allowed me to get my knight to a good square. And so I've got now a bishop and knight defending the pawn. I decide to take the rooks off, um, but that does allow his king over towards the pawn. But I thought my king would get here fast enough. But I looked at this later with the chess engine, and um, the engine is pretty confident that... Um, <clears throat> that uh, black can hold this position uh, with the move knight f6. Just uh, keeping pressure on the pawn, and if there's enough pressure on the pawn, I can't really maneuver my knight around. My knight really wants to go somewhere like uh, here to chase the king away, and you can see that's quite a few moves. Uh, the knight is uh, a long way from being able to deliver uh, any kind of uh, check to that king. 
it's it's as far away from the king as it can get practically <laughs> and um and during that time uh, white can manage to get three pieces attacking my pawn and, and win it so so i'm sort of tied down to the defense of the pawn and i can't really have a i don't really have an active plan to make progress so black can hold this game uh, with careful play but he played knight c5 and so now i can start with my kind of long-term plan of winding my knight around to a square where i can attack the king and push the pawn forward um, and then he makes a second mistake here and this is actually game over with uh, this move um, because I, I can just win this pawn there's, there's no way to um, defend it in the long run because <coughs> the knight comes here and attacks this pawn can never advance so um, <coughs> he can just grab the d pawn right away he didn't for some reason but uh, we get to a similar position after I take he takes um, and the position would be similar if he had taken first but he could have gotten his king one step forward that might have been a little bit better for him but it's still winning because I have this outside pass pawn and eventually that's gonna cause trouble uh, first he tries making some oh no first I step forward and he tries making some pawn moves so I just um, block the uh, king side over here so he has no more moves and now he's forced to move his king and if he goes towards the king side pawns I'm just gonna push the queen side pawn and draw him away or queen so he goes the other way and I go towards the king side pawns He steps forward to try and win this pawn but at this point he realizes it's hopeless I mean he can win this pawn but uh, I'm gonna get both of these and uh, he can't stop them from queening so um, I think it's instructive at this point to notice that there's no need for me to, to move this pawn at all. I can just leave it there as a target. Um, the only time I would actually need to move it is if he started moving his king in the other direction, and then I could move it and make a threat to pull his king away. But uh, basically, I don't want to waste uh, any time. If he starts going for the pawn, I'm immediately going to start going with my king uh, for his pawns and uh, leave this pawn far away to waste as much of Black's time as possible. Okay, uh, that's it for this uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.